We are here because we are dedicated to helping the entire CrossFit community. Determined to elevate coaches, box owners, athletes, and everything in between, we believe that this mission will begin right here, right now. While this time and this goal begins with you, our hope is that you take this fire ignited within you and weave it into your own life with the same unrelenting passion to give those you have the privilege of coming in contact with the best hour of their day. Burn. First of Jason. all, first of all, first we get of all. feedback. We get feedback that I start every episode with some sort of like, hey, Fern. Is that true? I don't know. I'm very rarely paying attention when you talk. <laughs> So, this is surprising. Are you ready? I mean, I, yes, I'm ready. We all know that I'm a level four coach, correct? It's obvious. We, we all also know that this is, this is kind of, the level four is kind of like dungeons and dragons. I'm like, a dungeon master. Yeah, you have a three pronged frog sword that is not actually real. <laughs> <laughs> Truth be told, I've never played Dungeons and Dragons. I do use it in the nutrition lecture at the level one because I talk about a real story of Jason Murphy, coach at my box who lost a lot of weight, like 200 pounds being a lot of weight. And I always say, you know, he played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons before CrossFit. And you know what goes, let me ask you this question. What goes along with Dungeons and Dragons? I have no idea. I've never buy it only loosely even know what dungeons and dragons is well, you, probably probably only from watching um stranger things on netflix well virginity first of all but <laughs> <laughs> that i would agree with yeah yeah for sure yeah <laughs> secondly is an excessive amount of mountain dew oh okay wait why is it or do these games just go on forever well i think just the you know Look, we got to be careful of what we say here. We don't want to offend all of our fans. That I just had, I just had this. I just had like a, a flash memory of of the movie of Revenge of the Nerds. Maybe. Nerds. I got I might throw that on tonight with Roz. But you should. No, you know, it, look, I'm going to say this, and it's going to come off as insensitive. But the types of people that play Dungeons and Dragons typically drink a lot of Mountain Dew, eat a lot of chips. They play a lot of video games. You're not you're not finding the healthiest people playing in you know their parents' basement. Oh, you're seven. sitting in a dark room doing nothing for hours on end. Yeah. Right. So anyway, Pro probably low in vitamin D. Very there's a whole important. host of things. There's a whole host of things that are problematic about this. So in the lecture, I always say, you know, the first step I made. Well, I always say, you know, what goes along with Dungeons and Dragons, and typically someone in the one of the participants says Mountain Dew, and I'm like, really? Play, almost always. <laughs> And I'm like, you play Dungeons and Dragons. Gotcha. Dude. This is a trick. To, this is a trick to draw people out. We got you. <laughs> and but I would say the first step I made with Murph back, you know, this is probably 2009. Was hey, dude, when you play this nerd game, I need you. No offense. But I need you to go from Mountain Dew to Diet Mountain Dew. And he did, and he lost probably 20 plus pounds, not changing anything except going to Diet Mountain Dew and inevitably someone's like is that really healthy and i'm like healthier no. than being 500 pounds yeah 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 healthier it's not healthy but it's healthier but it's a step in the right direction but <clears throat> right point being you know if you want to offer my yeah, yeah bring this back bring this back i want to see how you do this okay. it's coming full circle it is what do you think of my haircut i think a blind man gave you a haircut <laughs> i love it yeah I am officially a flow master. <laughs> I see. I see where we're going. <laughs> also, blasphemy. This is yeah. You definitely are level twelve uh, dungeon master. Is is where you're going with this for sure? Yeah, yeah. I got an email today. <clears throat> I'm running one of the online webinar L1 webinars, and in the title, I'm listed as flow master. Right. This is akin to showing up to an event you know let's use weightlifting right like how many how many people would show up in in masters weightlifting that in your weight class 
me my personal you yeah. yeah you you would be the you would be the only competitor at which point you would in fact win your weight class and be declared the champion by default because you're the only person there which is very similar to the scenario you are by default listed as the flow master because you will be the only person there so uh two things congratulations and this is not real yeah <laughs> I've stood atop many podiums as the only athlete as in the, the weight only class. Athlete, yeah. I, yeah, I remember. I, when I don't I was, want to take that from you. I don't want to take that from you. I remember um, when I was wrestling in middle school, my very first tournament. So if you at a dual meet, if no one is in your weight class, you get a forfeit and you actually get a win. But For a forfeit is counted as a win? In dual meets. At tournaments, you just get a buy. What's and a dual you, meet? I don't know anything about wrestling. So a dual meet would be like my team, you know, team Arvada, Colorado against, you know, team Rice. And there's, it's changed over the years and it is different based on states, but there's like say 13 weight classes. And you have one of each weight class. That's your varsity team. Right. I have one of each weight class. So when I first started wrestling on varsity, it's in my book, by the way, I talk about this. Um, which we found out you benefit from the, my book sales. I got four dollars, apparently. <laughs> so I will buy myself some coffee. So mm. if 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 my team Actually, had a nice you know, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna chip in to find you a new barber. That's what I'm gonna do with my <laughs> I four bucks. I really love this haircut. Um Rods gave me like when I came home last night, I can tell she was like, hmm. Hmm. Sure hey, conver conversely, I got a haircut. Up. And people were, and Cassie was like, you look like a young midshipman at the Naval Academy. And I was like, damn right I do. I was like, look, years, years younger. You've got a 1980s military look going on. Like Top Gun? Top Gun, exactly. Like playing, like playing volleyball in the sand in my jeans? It's exactly, Fine, I'll take it. that's I'll take literally it. the scene I was thinking. I'll minus take it. I'm going to go, I'm going to go tape my hands and play volleyball in the parking lot right now. So, anyway, going back to the wrestling dual meets, I wrestled 91 pounds. That's the only reason my coach wanted me was because I was so small. And if the other team did not have a 91 pounder, I would get a win and our team would get six points, which is the equivalent of a pin. So, if you pin someone, you get six points. If you got a forfeit, you get six points. If you decision somebody, which basically means I beat you, but, you know, on five points, you would get three, et cetera. So you, that would count as a win on your record. My very first varsity season as a freshman, my record, I believe was five and 12. And- I'm not sure you know this because your parents probably told you you're a winner, but that's not good. It was not good. And I think of those five wins, four were by forfeit. One was by pin, I pinned a kid. Um, so imagine how weak I looked, how weak that kid looked, because I pinned him. So I anyway, saw that video of you wrestling, and I was like, "I'm gonna buy Jay a sandwich." That's, that that's was how, my. That's how, that's how malnourished that you, you looked. Yeah, that video, it's terrifying. A video that we posted is actually my favorite match ever. Because of course it is. that's why you have that VHS mounted on your wall. <laughs> I I was the underdog, and it was a really it was a big match actually at sectionals. And I was not supposed to win. And it was just one of those things where I did not give up. I persevered. So anyway, I was at a tournament and you get buys. And I told my stepfather, I was like, I got two wins today. He's like, no, you didn't. <laughs> I was like, All right. That's good parenting. That's good parenting. That's what your stepfather should have said. He'd be like, no, no, you did not win anything. You did not lose, but you did not, in fact, win anything. So I can appreciate that. I like your stepdad now. You, you don't follow like mixed martial arts and wrestling. Uh, like, not not necessarily wrestling. I, I follow uh, MMA like loosely. Like, somebody I think you would really like. I really like him. I'm a big fan of him. Is a guy named Ben Askren. Oh, he just fought Jake Paul. He did fight Jake Paul, and he did get knocked out in the first round by Jake Paul. Yeah. But Jake Paul is a legit boxer, though. Like if you listen, I'm not, I, that whole that whole thing is an intriguing environment to me. This whole kind of like celebrity boxing match deal. It's a total money maker and it's a money grab and I get it. Um, but after he knocked out Nate uh, Robinson, Robinson, I think people like 
kind of like don't don't give that dude credit for his skills in boxing. Like he's a he has legit boxing skills. One hundred percent. And Ben Askren, if you know him, was a, a two time two time Division One. Uh, he won the Dan Hodge twice which is the equivalent of the Heisman in wrestling. And only mm-hmm. three other people, I think, have run, won it twice. He was an Olympian, et cetera. But yes, he got knocked out. But his attitude, like the way he deals with uh, just adversity and all that, I think you'd really like him. And for the listeners as well, I, he's, I'm just a big fan of him. And you know, just Google him. And of course, the first thing you'll see is him getting knocked out. But if you dig in a little bit, his mindset on just like, one of the things he says often is don't tie your ego to the outcome. It's right. a really, I, I love it. I think you would like him. But anyway. The, uh, there's another, uh, did you listen to the Joe Rogan podcast with Dan Gable? Oh yeah, of course. That was great. It was great. It's great. Dan, I mean, Dan Gable is probably the best American wrestler ever. But That's actually a good segue. Well, yeah. right? well let's wrap up my four master talk. <laughs> Listen, I think it was time to move on. I, I think the don't wrap your ego to the outcome is is actually a great segue for the topic. And because this is, I probably had this conversation six times in the past week with regard to, so we're, we're, you know, taking a lot of people through the kind of coaches development portion of the course and diving into lesson plans, stuff like that. And a lot of people have <clears throat> um, get outsourced their programming, which I, I have no feelings about either or. Um, but what's one of the big things that you get from people or the feedback you get from people when you say, Hey, we outsource our programming, but I have this problem or these concerns. Like what, what's give me one to three of the top um, issues that people have. So whenever you do this, you're looking for specific answers. And I feel a really. lot of I will be able, pressure. I will be able to pick the answer out because I have at least a moderate amount of confidence that you will give me something that is relatively close. And if not, right. I will do what I always do. And I will pick you up off of the mat and I will carry you to the finish line. <laughs> One of the things that we hear a lot is, you know, my members will, you know, wonder why I'm not doing it or why we're not doing it specifically. In other words, you know, why am I paying to come to CrossFit right when you're just paying, you know, right. programming X, Y, Z. Okay. What else? You want another, another one? Yeah. One to three. I'll give it. We'll give you that. We'll call that. We'll call that strike one. Okay. We'll use, and as you say, we'll use a football analogy and we'll call that strike one. Air ball. Um, yeah. <laughs> number two, I would say they don't know my members. They don't know what my members need. Strike two. Think of yeah. this from a coaching standpoint, I not get, from an affiliate owner standpoint. I get four strikes, right? Uh, okay. In hockey, yes. Yeah. If, if we're looking at it from a coaching standpoint, there's too much in a day. Uh, okay. All right. So. Uh, so you didn't yeah. give me the right. I got just the answer. A little, just, little, right. just a little guidance. Just a little guidance. Okay. Just a little guidance. Remember when there's only one set of footprints in the sand. That's that's what that's I can. That's me carrying you. The uh, so. One of the things that I think with regard to lesson plans, so we talk a lot about like outsourcing and lesson plans and, and, and having a lot in the hour, but I, I think, so some of that is like, Hey, a little bit of acknowledging uh, potentially like a flaw on our end, which is just highlighting the issue. Now we know what our issue with that is, but I, I, was, I thought it'd be cool to bat around some ideas it's like, okay, what are some potential solutions to that? that kind of road bump that we have, which is we outsource it. We're not changing it because it does save time. You know, um, at the end of the day, the programming doesn't matter. So you just might as well have somebody else do it. I think all of that is pretty legit. So I was, I've been going back and forth with this is, is not having to not holding so rigid to the program. If I, in fact, write my own lesson plan. So whether you get a lesson plan or not, depending on who you're, who you're going through, I think it's worth noting that you should still be able to write a lesson plan. And I think you should still write a lesson plan, right? Because it's your gym, it's your members, your equipment, your space, all of that stuff. So maybe not all the time, but I think on a regular basis, you should write lesson plans. Now, full disclosure, I don't write my own lesson plans, but I do write a lot of lesson plans. Like when I teach this stuff, when we teach level ones and level twos, like I'm writing multiple times a month like going through it so it's not like i never write lesson plans and, and, and though you think like anything not that you can't benefit or continuously improve but you've done it like you've put your time in with lesson plans 
Right. And, and it's one of those things you're like, should you do them? Yes. Do I need to in air quotes? Probably not. Now, will I do that if I'm under the gun and being evaluated? Absolutely. Just write the lesson plan and then execute it to the second. And that's kind of the goal. That's what um, I just coached the uh, heavy day or the coaching under load at the level two. And I wrote out a, you only need 20 minutes because that's what you get for the warm up. But I mean, to the second, I wrote it out and I executed it. And Nicole Gordon, who was the flow master, you know, now I'm a flow master. So it's so strange. <laughs> but but, um, but uh, she was like, wow, you nailed it. And I was like, because I thought, you know, had I not doubt, done that, the participants would not have noticed. Right. I would have. And Nicole would have. Right. So, and where I was going with this is, and I, so we were going through scenarios when, when with a couple different people, and it was the same scenario each time, which is, Hey, I have a strength plus a Metcon. And then, and it doesn't even really matter what the strength and what the Metcon is. It's kind of irrelevant. The point that we kept coming to was, Hey, what, what is the problem that you have now identified by writing a lesson plan? So we'll stick with the strength plus Metcon because it tends to be the problem scenario, Right. And it's like, what can we do to solve for this that doesn't involve abandoning the program altogether, but also doesn't involve just throwing my hands up and saying, fuck it, I'm just going to herd these cats all the way through to the end. And I was like, well, how about we come up with some altered scenarios where I make soft adjustments to the programming that allows me to do both that my members will be completely unaware of, but allows me to continue to coach right? To coach more effectively, right? Because remember the purpose of writing lesson plans is like to maximize my effectiveness from coaching. If you think back to your level one and your level two, but more importantly, the, what I think is the real purpose of a lesson plan is this is my measuring stick for success for myself. This is how I gauge, am I doing this well, right? So like the, the mere fact that you know that you hit that timeline to the second is your measuring stick. You would not be able to measure it against anything if you didn't do that. This is the akin to either you know, tracking your macros, but never writing it down or walking into a CrossFit gym, exercising every day, but never once logging it. You wouldn't know. You'd have no measurement for, for anything, good or bad. You'd just be like, I feel like it's working. I feel like the classes are going well. That's what lesson plans are for. So we went through a ton of scenarios, and I had like quite a few today. And I was like, this is worth talking about because I think a lot of people would benefit from this, which is you don't have to abandon it, but also understand you don't have to – you're not beholden to that workout completely as written just like i tell our members here nothing here is mandatory i think that's a huge mistake box owners make when they pay for programming i think it's like i pay for it so i'm going to use it because i pay for it right it's like right it's like going to a restaurant getting a meal that you are allergic to and be like well i paid for it so i'm gonna eat it. i'm gonna eat it yeah it's you're paying for you are paying for programming and i'd say five to six out of seven days, it should be cut pace. But there's always going to be a day that, based on equipment, based on uh, you know how exhausted your members are, based on you know the, the temperature outside because there's running. You, like just because you pay for it doesn't mean you should be 100% attached to it. And this is where I was going. And this I think is is a more tangible, more realistic, more coach owner friendly discussion right so i'm trying to solve this problem so like people come to level two and they realize that this is problematic because we have to take out coaching in order to put more things in the hour well what if we find some sort of compromise here what if we kind of meet in the middle like what what can we take that we already have right the, the owner paid for this and they feel like they're not going to get the value out of it if we just throw it out the window so let's not throw it out the window let's figure out what works right and I was just kind of doing these on the fly in these calls. And they were just like, all right, give me the workout. And we'll just literally just do it on the desk. Like I always do. Meaning like, I'll just write it on the desk and we'll come through and we'll just identify some pain points here. And then we'll rearrange them. And most of them, it takes like, I don't know, maybe five minutes to identify. This is, you know, this is five minutes of discussion. This is not five minutes of me looking at it. This is just five minutes of bouncing things back and forth. And the reason I mentioned that is because it's not going to be as time consuming as people think. So Let's just say that you have, um, let's say, let's use some, let's use a five by five back squat and a 12 minute AMRAP of, I don't know, you pick the minutes, doesn't even matter. 
let's go back. What was the time? 10 minutes? What? 12. You, yeah. Oh, 12 minutes. Yeah, 12. 12 minute MRAP of 10 back squats at 185. Okay. Let's do a couplet. Live your so life you could, in couplets. So you couldn't do any of these. Got it. All right. So we have to scale immediately. Right. Live your life in couplets and triplets. 10 back squats, 185. And then uh, let's go 15 handstand push ups. Ooh, what a workout. Ooh. So what 12, workout. AMRAP 12 of, of, you said 10 back squats and, 12 and 15. Hands, no, and 15 12. handstand push ups. Let's go. No, let's go 12. Let's go 12. 10 and 12 handstand push ups. <clears throat> Okay. First of all, tell me what you think the stimulus of that's going to be. That's why I have 12 minutes. So 10 back squats. The, let's go one. And let's also give the female weight 135. None of this 125 nonsense. I think that's BS. You see that a lot these days. I just what? be like, hey, listen, it, equality. Everybody's at 185. <laughs> well, that's what back in the day on CrossFit, back I'm in the just day, There's just two like ladies one listening, you want chivalry until it comes time to back squat 185. <laughs> um, all right, so 10 back squats, I would, I would poach that as that should be unbroken. Maybe okay. towards the end, you break it up. We're going from the rig. We're going from the rig. So you can do a quick rack. So maybe... As, as you get a little fatigue, two sets max. But those first, I would probably brief it minutes. How many rounds? Let me, I'm working it out. I'm I doing know. it in my head. Yeah. Um, uh. So 10 back squats, unbroken, call it 30 seconds, 45 on the wall. Let's call it 45, because I like to take deep breaths. 45, and then another 45 for the handstand push-ups. So... 90 second rounds, two every three, eight, eight rounds, eight, eight rounds for the best at the box. I would say high, high level athletes are, are doing nine, 10, maybe. That's probably rounds? a little too aggressive, actually. In retrospect. Rounds, you said? Yeah. Eight oh, rounds no. is too many. Six. Way too many. Uh, yeah, six. I was going to be like three to six, six on the high end. Three six, to six. Six, is, every two six is seven. That's 72 handstand push ups, bro. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm really good at handstand. Short arms. Yeah, you have yeah. to really you have to do a two inch range of motion. It did so. actually, now that I think about it, pick my two strengths. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. We just throw back squat in there as a strength. You but... saw me back squat 185 50 times, dude. I did see you do that. This um, is only 10. All right. So I just, while you're doing that, I just wrote out a real quick timeline based on on those time demands right so if we want six minutes on the back end for a workout that's 54 three minutes for the whiteboard brief but you're going well i like what you're doing but in fairness you're talking too fast for the listeners you're talking well, over the heads we have so you know our listeners are not the brightest you know that right <laughs> <laughs> but they're avid fans, right? Okay, so while you're doing that, I was writing a lesson plan, essentially. So what I was looking at is I want three minutes for the whiteboard brief. We want at least six minutes on the back end for the cool down. So now I'm looking at right there, that's a 53-minute class. Wait, no, no, 51 minutes. Six and, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry, 51, 51, 50. So then go back from uh, 54. I know I got a 12-minute AMRAP, so I'm oh, at 40. But again, you're going back from 54 because you're saying the last six minutes of class is cool down. Cool down. COVID protocols. Cool down COVID protocols. I've got the AMRAP from 42 to 54. So I put I put a four. Hold on, hold on. I put a four minute transition. So stop there. Between. Four minute transition before the workout. Correct. Before oh. from the back squat to the handstand push up, and the AMRAP. Four minute transit. What do you mean? Meaning, like we were going to do a back squat, and then we were going to do a twelve minute AMRAP. Oh, you got a you you added a strength in there. Yeah, yeah. I said it from the beginning. It's two parts, right? That's what we're going to oh, okay. un unpack. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, okay. So you the, the right, and it makes sense that the, the strength is the same movement. But one thing you said, so you you brought it back to fifty four minutes for the cool down. You're going to run the workout right into that cool down, which is then where the twelve minutes comes off. So now you're at forty two minutes. Correct. Working backwards. Gotcha. Right. Right. So think, if I go if I go backwards from 60, 54, go backwards another 12 minutes, 42, go backwards an additional four minutes for transition. I'm at 38. Now from there, we have 20-ish minutes. Let's just say 20 minutes for the back squat portion of this. 
Okay. What's what's the max squat portion? Five by five. Uh, typically, it's a five by five, right? And this is kind of the point, right? Which is a, which is what we're gonna do. No, typically, I'm that's stressed out. This is a lot to do. Right, right. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna unpack this because a lot of people are are stressed out by this. And so, if we go back from 38, we go to 18, and then I have to chop off another three minutes at the um, front end. Well, you, the whiteboard brief already cuts off three minutes on the front. Three end. minutes. So now we have 15 minutes to go right. from hey, welcome. That's the end of my whiteboard brief to your right. squatting heavy. To your squatting heavy, but we have yet to cover the handstand push up. Okay. So we have to cover that. We can't just, we're not going to teach that in the four minutes. We probably cover it on the front end and then go from there. <clears throat> so I also, I can I go make ahead. a correction? Right. I don't think for a workout like this, six minutes, that you may need longer at the, at the, at the cool down because let's assume. Right, but, I, but I put six minutes because. That's really all we're going to get probably with all the stuff in the hour. Well, I'm just saying realistically, we have less time because it, at 185, I got 225s, I got 245s, I got a bar. You got people scaling handstand pushups, so there's boxes all over the floor. Again, you're highlighting all the things that are problematic about this, but let's assume that we, on the timeline, we put six minutes and you could get cleaned up in six minutes. Yeah, you're not going to down things. I mean, I'm laying on my back for six minutes after that workout. Right. So I won because I won the day. Right. So if we go back to 18, this leaves me with 15 minutes to get a couple of things done. We got to get warmed up for the back squat because that 20 minutes potentially could include maybe one warm up set, but I'm going to get five. Typically, what I would tell people is like in 20 minutes is enough time to get seven sets. Roughly working one every th including warm up. Like roughly five working sets, including maybe those two that are going to get into kind of my working sets, right? But like every three minutes, roughly, I'm getting something on the bar, which is going to put me right around 20 ish, 21 minutes. So that's not necessarily enough for the like to really get heavy if that's the goal for today. It's but not. then, oh, but then over here, so I've got to get general warm up in here. I've got to get a specific warm up in here, and I've got to cover the back squat and the handstand push up here in 15 minutes. And if you're listening to this and you're like, this is crazy tight, I would agree with you. Probably right, not enough time to do a ton of teaching. This is now this in is the funny. scenario, in the scenario, what is typically going to get is typically going to get glossed over just kind of briefly. All of the teaching, basically. Right, but, but pick a pick a movement. What's going to get glossed over in this day? It's probably going to be the handstand push-up. Right. They're just going to be like, if you've got handstand push-ups over there, if you're scaling, grab some dumbbells, grab or you can do some handstand. Grab a bot, right. Blah, right? Just to be like, hey, do it. Okay. Now, if you have to do that, you have to do that. And if if you are presented with a scenario, my recommendation is like, you should have all the scaling predetermined. I'm just going to tell people what they're doing. It's kind of like smoke them if you got them. And if you don't, here's your option. Speaking okay. of that, we're recording on 420 right now. Right. Smoke them if you got them. So. I'm really fucking high right now. Hung, hungry, hungry. So <laughs> and um, hungry. I can yeah. I can never tell if you're high or not anyway. But the Does anybody uh, got Dorito? <laughs> um, so <clears throat> in this scenario, right, what I'm suggesting here is don't throw the programming out the window, right? Just modify it to get a very similar stimulus. So right out of the gate. What I'm probably going to do here in order to buy back time to get some teaching on here. Let me is, guess. Go ahead. Three by five instead of five by five. Ooh, I love it. Three by five, but I'm going to cut the sets. I'm probably going to go from five to three essentially, right? Because that is, that is really, right. That's what I'm saying, right? I, you, I, you said three by five and I said, I said uh, three by five or even three by three is what I'm suggesting, but like oh, three it's sets. Less reps even. Right, right. So yeah, and right. Because I, can I, go ahead. Can I critique you there? Please do. I don't dislike that, but I also think if, if, if you're doing that, I might need more warm up time because we are going heavier. Right. So again, I'm just saying the, the, the general premise here is, is just less set so that we can get it done faster. Okay. Now the idea is not to make this an EMOM style, but again, it's go from five to three. You can make it five by five. You can make it three by five. You can make it three by four. Again, there's not a ton of magic in those numbers because no gym is running successful periodization where everybody shows up and they're doing the program as written for weeks on end, right? That's just not realistic. So that's the first thing, right? And then I, what I would probably do is I would probably steal back an additional four from the 12 minute AMRAP and I would probably make it eight minutes. Wow. So 
stealing four from there because realistically that last four minutes is probably a goat rope anyway or if i'm thinking about that workout like that's probably rough right so in order to do that i'm probably going to steal four minutes from there maybe two like it's completely up to you but i think everybody's kind of like playing along here which is like you don't have to hold super rigid to this i can still get the, the exact same outcome by having moderate tweaks to these pieces but what this allows me to do is let's just say that i steal back I don't know, five off of the 20. And then I take four from the other piece there. That's nine minutes. Now what I have is instead of 15 minutes is 24 minutes in order to get the specific and general work done, which I'm totally happy with now as a coach. Is it ideal? It's still not necessarily ideal, but I haven't thrown the baby out with the bathwater and I haven't completely abandoned the programming. And this is the, again, this is the point of doing lesson plans, whether they're given to you or not, because again, we've said this before, your ability, um, your, your ability to facilitate that said programming or said lesson plan is the only thing that matters. It has, no, it's not about the lesson plans. It's not about the programming. It's just like what unfolds when I walk out on the floor. So what I really need to think about is like, okay, if I write my own lesson plan based on this and I realize I have no time, this is when I can present this to a gym owner. If in fact you're a head coach and be like, Hey, here's my recommendation so that we can get a little bit more coaching on here. We don't have to abandon it. Let's just go three by five and let's make this eight. And I think we can get way more done in the hour with regard to getting some coaching in and then doing that. And for the most part, nobody's the wiser on this. Like the programming is virtually identical. It now just represents a 60 minute timeline where before it was written, I would argue that that is, should be a 75 minute timeline. Yeah. So for, your, your members have no idea. I agree with you there. Zero, zero. I'm go, here's what I would actually have changed the workout to. I would have made it three rounds per time, 10 and 15. Right. You could do the old pancake, right? Which is like, okay, roughly what we were going to, what were we going to get here? Well, and it just, people are going to work harder and be done faster. I mean, that's the mm. whole point of it past priority versus time priority. Hey, this is three rounds. It's now a sprint. You need to be unbroken on both movements, you know, or maybe one quick break on the handstand pushups. And but now the you points were done much faster. Right. And the point stands, which is, and when I say pancake, I know, mute people on, I know this is kind of probably like a red shirt uh, uh, phrase that we use, which is like, Hey, take it from task and flip it over and make it time or vice versa. Meaning like, depending on what you got going on, hey, we were gonna get about four rounds here in this AMRAP, let's just make it four rounds or the opposite, which is like, hey, I wanna be moving for about this many minutes and this is gonna be uh, whatever, four rounds. Be like, let's just make it a, an eight minute AMRAP if people get a little bit more great, but then I know I'm gonna be done in eight minutes. And again, nobody's the wiser. So. I think looking at it a little bit more critically and understanding like this is not about like abandoning the programming or doing this other stuff. It's about like optimizing the class and you can do both, right? So I can live in both worlds. I can take this outsource programming, but it does require that I write a lesson plan and that I look at it critically and be like, this is going to be tight. This just leads to herding cats. This is not optimal for the members as they come through. It's less coaching but I realize this is what they want to do. So what's the compromise? And the compromise probably looks a lot like this when it's not massive tweaks. We're talking about four minutes and five minutes here, which nobody knows, by the way. Nobody knows. They would have no idea. No, nor do they know that you've done three sets instead of five, which, by the way, very few of your members need to do five heavy sets. Right. The volume is just too high in those scenarios. So I, and we, I walked through like probably like five or six of these different types of scenarios and always came up with something that was way more um, palatable for the coach, like relieved a little bit of anxiety where we could actually get some coaching in, but not thrown the programming out the window and just said, oh, we can't do both. Be like you can, it just looks slightly different. And this is kind of what I would like people to explore more. However, my point with all of this is it requires that you do this prior to, right? You look at these workouts and like, look at the timeline and analyze that and be like, is that timeline realistic? Is that something our coaches have the skill to do? It, are we even comfortable with that? Like if we just shave four minutes and four minutes, does everybody feel better across the board? Have we minimized, you know, the volume that we're going to put on our, on our athletes because they're just there for GPP and given our coaches more opportunity to coach. 
Um, so I thought that would be valuable because I've done it like, I don't know, I think like six times in the past two days, because that is the common theme is just like, I've got all this stuff. Like we, we outlined one yesterday when it was basically like from the whiteboard brief to like getting started, they had like four minutes to basically like start and then get into the rest of the training for the day. And I was like, how do you feel about that? And they're like terrified. And I'm like, you should, I would feel terrified and I'm pretty good at this. It, it really is. I think it's one of those things that coaches really box on it, but you, you said something earlier that I like, I don't know if you meant it like this, but coaches need to look at that. And if we talked about it on a recent episode, if you want a real job, if you want to create something, that's where you should be showing up, you know, at your meeting or whenever you see the next week of programming and not just showing up as Fern likes to say with a drunken monkey, Hey, this is too much. Hey, this is too much. Here's what I recommend we do this hour. And and think about how that's going to be received. You're not coming with like full, you know, just wipe the board with everything and starting from scratch. Be like, hey, based on what I think this is going to f- like unfold as, because again, I want everybody to think about this from like, you know, number one, these things are probably automatically uploaded to Push Press or Wattify from whoever who you're buying for. So there is some admin work on the back. That is very easy admin work, which you should go to them and be like, I'll make the change, right? Super but it, but it does require a change, right? So we do need to acknowledge that. That's one of the reasons your owner is going to push back and be like, that's an, I don't want to have to go do that. Now I have to go do this shit every single time and it's putting work back on my plate. But if I change this just a little bit, like you're talking about like a couple of, you know, slaps to the keyboard and we're done. I'm not changing the full thing like nothing really has to change here with regard to how it's scored it's like changing rep schemes here and then changing the you know the rounds or something like that there and this would be i think it would be much better received because you're not asking them to change this whole thing and you're looking at it for what's benefit for the members right and again this what ultimately what's why this is important is like you will get no pushback from the members here because they will have no idea and that's something both box owners and coaches forget they think all our members know that yes if you let them know hey this was supposed to be this now it's this but even in that case i would say here's why this is better because guess what those last four minutes of the metcon you would have gotten one more round so what does that mean your intensity is on a steep steep decline rather than that let's go hard for eight minutes but you show you, you said in the box on, Hey, this is what I recommend. And not only that, here's what I've written out for the hour. Now you're a stud coach. Right. Now you look like a rock star and ever. And again, nobody's the wiser. And that's why I was like, I was like, we need to talk about this because this is probably the, this is probably one of the top issues that people come to the table with when they're coaching and, and working through outside programming is navigating this scenario. And again, we don't like, again, you may not have the control to change the full programming and just do less in the hour. Cool. Here's your solution. Come with and come with something that kind of falls in the middle. Yeah. I think in general, it's just lazy to outsource your programming and not kind of look at it. It would be like hiring a contractor in your house and be like, well, I've hired you go and never checking in or, you know, any right. number of analogies you can use there. And there's also considerations. For example, we're doing a deload week right now. And, and yeah, I've hit last week's programming. I get why, but there are people that are out of town. There are people that missed right, that didn't week. need the deload. Right. So whether or not you change it, you need to be aware of that as the coach at the whiteboard. Hey guys, if you weren't, weren't here last week and you're not tired, here are some things we can do. You know, the, we did back squats based on a very low percentage. Go heavier today. You don't have to go 70%. You can, you can push it. If you're feeling beat up, it's a great week to just go a little easier, you know, move, move with a purpose that, you know, yes, what you're saying is absolutely true, but the big picture is don't be tied to like, like we talked about, don't tie your ego to the outcome. Don't, don't be tied to this just because you paid. for it. Right. And I think that I, I hope that helps because this is something that it's, it, it honestly does stress a lot of people out, right. Coaches and box owners. Cause like box owners hate the feedback about like, it's too much. They don't want to change it. Cause they know their members are going to be, and then coaches don't want to have to deal with it, but they also feel stressed out because they feel like they should be doing more. Um, so it is, it is kind of like a weird little kind of like everybody's circling the toilet bowl and nobody wants to just get out. I'm just like, just get out. Like it's fine. You know? So 
um, I don't know. I just thought that would be worth talking about. And I think, I think it will help a lot of people because it's not a drastic change, but a small change can have a significant effect. Yeah. And, and I think a, a secondary lesson there is really just how you laid out that lesson plan, right? It's not rocket science and it doesn't have to take hours, you know, throw in your cool down. Like for I me, mean, every day you're going three in the front, six or seven right. in the back. I think that's a, that's what you said. <laughs> um, but you know, and then you, and then you just work backwards. All right. When do I start my neck, my conditioning, which right. obviously time priority, simple task priority means you need to figure that out how long it right. should take. And then, and then work backwards. You don't, yes, the more detail oriented, you can be the better meaning, Hey, in a specific warm up, we're going to do five back squats with an empty bar. We're going to focus on knees. And we're going to do five at 95. And we're going to focus on midline. You know, that's the detail that really makes your class stand out. But at an absolute minimum, just chunk it down to brief, specific, general, break, wad, cool down. Well, and then, of course, if you're throwing in the strength there, you got to figure out where that goes. Right. I typically tell people, like, there's three, there's three watermarks that we have to hit, right, as a new coach, right? When am I getting out of the whiteboard brief? When do I start the workout? And am I finishing in, on time with regard to the cool down, right? Like just hit those three. And then, then I want to deep dive into each one of those sections as I can consistently hit those timelines. Now I want to talk about like what you're doing with your time. And that's where we really start kind of like putting the screws on people and making them uncomfortable. And they're like, well, I have uh, this much time for the specific warm up. I'm like, no, no, I want you to tell me what you're going to do with every second of that specific warm up. And they're like, well, it's going to get warmed up. And I'm like, no, 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 no all the details, reps, progression, what are you looking for, all that stuff. But first start with the big ticket items and then work from there. Um, but I think the big takeaway is they're like, don't be beholden to the programming. It is it is written very generally and it should be treated as such. And you should be the professional that you want to be and look at it through the lens of like, what is best for my clients and my coaches in order to get them the results that they want and deliver on the service that we are here for. And it means looking at that with a critical eye and making the changes that are necessary. Well done, Fern. Well done. One day you too will be a flow master. I can't wait. <laughs> and until then I will give you feedback. Thank you. But that's good. I hope everybody took something from that. And we, we covered this a lot in the coaches development aspect of affiliate you. And one thing that I think those that are listening that they're like, yeah, I don't know about this. I don't know if I need to spend that much time. This is how you become a better coach. Because like you said, if you lay out that specific warm up, and let's continue with the back squats. And I say, okay, five reps, knees, guess what? Now I know exactly where I'm looking for those five reps. And I know exactly what I need to be cueing. It's going to look like knees out. It's going to look like touch my hand as you push out. It's going to look like spread the floor. Cool. Next rep. Oh, I'm sorry, next set, we're going to go to midline. It's going to look like flex your eye. You know, it, it, it just opens your eyes to see better when you know exactly what you're, you're coaching. Not just like, all right, guys, down, up, down, up. Right, right. So love it, Fern. Hopefully that helped people really think about what their lesson plans look like and whether or not they should be doing more of those lesson plans. And the answer is yes, you should. That's all we got for today. Drop in knowledge. That's a lot. That's a lot. You know, we just uh, we just drop knowledge on these people while they're driving, while they're walking. What do most people do? While they're getting while they're getting terrible haircuts. I don't know what <laughs> what do you like about my haircut. I, I can't. There's a lot. We don't have much. That's a whole separate podcast. I had I didn't do anything to it. I woke up and this is what's that expression? This is a uh, this know. is how I woke up. Isn't that thing? Isn't that also troubling? Anyway, anyway, if you're watching the video, you can see my fantastic hair. Burn, good stuff. We hope you guys enjoyed. So you never miss an episode of the podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and on all major podcasting platforms at best hour of their day. Thank you so much for tuning in and for being a part of the best hour of our day. See you next time.